Hello and welcome to the easy to dine video tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to take you through the process of creating your store menu and I'll show you all the various options available with menus. So to start, we're going to select our restaurant and the admin dashboard and we'll go to the menus page. Now, when first created, the menus page is going to be completely blank. If you want to get started quickly, you can hit the templates button on the top right and select the template available. Right now, we have the pizza menu, and see it created the pizza menu for me. So under the pizza, you have the categories, so pizza combo deals and sides, and under each category, I have some dishes. So margarita pizza, pepperoni pizza, and chicken pizza. It also created option sets for me. Option sets give the dishes that customizability. So it created a pizza-based choice and some extra toppings for the pizzas. If you go to our online store by pressing the view store button, now we can see that the pizza menu has been already added for us. Customers can already place an order and select the pizza, choose their base, add some extra topping and add that to their cart. So for the process of this tutorial, we're going to start completely from scratch and create a menu and go through all the options available. So we will go ahead and just delete the template. So we will delete the option sets and we will delete the menu. And now we will start from scratch. Now first we want to create a menu, so we'll hit the create a new menu button. The only required part to creating a menu is the menu name. But most people who just have a single menu can just call that a menu, hit save and just get started from here. But if your menu has different restrictions and you have multiple menus, then you probably need to customize it a little further. Say for instance, I have a breakfast menu and a dinner menu, and I might call this breakfast or I might call this dinner, and then that way when the com customers comes in, we have a breakfast menu and a dinner menu. Now I'll go through the other options available. The display name of the menu simply just overrides whatever name you've written here, especially in your online store. In the admin dashboard, it will always be called by the name. The description will just be written above your dishes, and it's a good way to highlight any particular detail. Now, if you need to restrict the menu, you can hit the conditions tab and you can see there's a whole bunch of different conditions that you can restrict your menu according to. So, for example, if you want to restrict it to orders from a later date, you can just do that by hitting later. There's only pickup orders and you can restrict it to a particular time. Now, we can also turn on age restricted access. This requires customers to have a verified account before ordering from this menu. And lastly, there are the pre-order settings. This means that if someone is to order from this menu, they must play the order in advance and you can select the numbers of days in advance that the order must be placed and you can select the cutoff time on down the last day that you're able to place the order. So if the order must be placed before 9 o'clock, 5 days in advance, you can just set it like that. So to start, we will create a very simple menu, we will disable all that, we will call our menu menu and we will go ahead and save that. There you go, you got your first menu. So the next step of the process is to create your categories and dishes. A menu can contain various categories and each category can contain dishes. So a category is just a logical grouping of the dishes that are available. So I'll go ahead and create a category. I will type in a name. So for instance, I can call this sandwiches. And if I want, I can add a display name, but it will just override whatever this name is in the online store. But we will just leave it blank and we will call it sandwiches and save. And I also create another category and call it pizzas and I will save that as well. The next we want to do is to create a dish under these categories. So if I select this category, I can create a new dish button and I can create a dish under the sandwich category. So I'll click that and now there's two types of dishes you can create, the standard dishes and the combo. So a combo dish allows the customer to choose multiple standard dishes. So for instance, if you have a combo, select two pizzas on one side and the customer can pick between two pizza dishes and one side dish. So I'll create the standard dish for now and I'll call it ham sandwich and I will price it at 950 and the display name is the same as explained earlier. And the description will just give your customer a little bit more information as what to expect from the dish. So I'll say amazing bread filled with a lot of ham. 
and the subtitle will just highlight a particular point you can leave it blank and you can even leave the description blank if you like and then press save now we will take a look at our online store and see what it looks like so i will hit the view store button and i can see that i have my category sandwiches and the ham sandwich dish available here but the other category pizzas that we created isn't showing and this is because we don't have dishes created yet so for the time being it will leave it out and just like that you can create all your dishes under all your various categories and slowly they will start to show up so now that we've seen the basics of creating menus categories and dishes let's take a deeper look as to what kind of options you have already when creating dishes so i'll create another one i will call it grilled chicken sandwich so i'll put the price at the description and last year we'll add the subtitle this time just to highlight something so most popular okay so we'll go up to the top and we'll go to the images and tags and here we will upload an image. If you have your images already somewhere else, you can hit the custom image and put the image URL. But otherwise, you can hit normal image and that's the upload button. Now, you can choose to upload from different places such as Facebook and Google Drive. But if you have the image on your computer, you can just hit choose a local file. So I selected the image of my grilled chicken sandwich and when it's done uploading I can press the add button and we'll see the images come up here. Now with the images ideally you want them to be a maximum of 600 pixels wide by 400 pixels high. Mainly because too big of an image it's just gonna take up a large file size and just gonna slow down the load time of the page. And because images are never gonna be displayed very big. Well, now we'll go to the options and ingredients tab. I'll talk about the options set in the next part, but for now we'll just look at the ingredients. Ingredients are a way for customers to see what's inside the product and for them to remove a certain ingredient if they don't want it. So I will add the ingredients. And once I'm done with that, I will press save. I will also create one more dish under the pizzas category exactly the same way. Okay, so once we're done creating our dishes, we can go back to our online store and refresh the page. And we're going to see now the dishes that we just created are over here. And we now also have two categories, sandwiches and pizzas. And if we go and hit the order button, and after selecting the sandwich, we get to see the nice image. And because we've added the ingredients, we can click down and remove anything we want. And here we can see the subtitle showing below the grilled chicken. So as it's written here, most popular, and then the description comes, and since I uncheck the ingredients in the cart, I can see that it's saying from this particular item, we must remove the grilled chicken and the lettuce, and it will also say that on the receipt for you as well. So if you go back to the online store, there is one more thing I'm going to show you with the dishes, which is if you select this little checkbox beside them over here, you can select multiple, and this little panel comes up. This panel allows you to set a dish availability and you can also delete the dishes this way. So for instance, let's say that we have the ham and cheese and I put it as no stock. So now if you go to the online store, we can see that it's already seeing that it's out of stock. So just like that, you can set your dishes out of stock and set them not available. Customers will no longer be able to order them after that. And if you want them to get back in stock, you can click here and simply press available. And there you go, now customers can order that again. To enable dish customization option, you need to create something called an option set. And then add that to your dish. So for example, the veggie pizza, we might want customer to choose from various sizes and maybe add some extra toppings on top. So we'll create this option set and add it to the veggie pizza. But to start on the menus page, we go to the option set tab on the top, press the create a new option set button. And we will call our pizza size option set, pizza size, and on the display name, which is what's gonna be shown for the customer, we'll just say size. Because on the admin dashboard, it's much nicer and easier to organize when you have what it's about and then the actual option type. 
And then for the customer, because they're seeing the size in the context of the pizza, they will know exactly what, what it means. Next, on the options tab, we will add two options, say a regular pizza size and then a large pizza size. For the large pizza size, we're going to make it $5 extra, so I'll click the price field and press 5. Next, we're going to the conditions tab. The conditions control how the actual option set functions within the online store. So in this particular example of pizza, it sizes because the customer has to pick a pizza size. We're going to enable the required setting, which means that the customer has to pick one from various options available. Lastly, we'll go to the add and remove from the dishes tab, and this allows us to easily add the option set in bulk to many dishes. So after selecting the veggie pizza, I will save. And now it's added to my veggie pizza. Next, we'll create the extra toppings, so we'll create a new option set of toppings. And here we'll call the display name extra toppings for the customers. And in options, we'll add three. So the extra chicken for $2, the extra cheese for $150, and the extra olives for $1. And then we will go to the conditions page. Now for the extra toppings, because the customer doesn't have to pick from one of the available ones, we can leave the required unchecked. But since we want them to be able to pick multiple extra toppings, we're going to enable the select multiple option. And then we'll go to the add and remove from dishes. And it's the same as before, we'll add it to our veggie pizza and press save. Now once that's done, we can head back to our online store, refresh the page and place an order. So I'll try to order our veggie pizza and we can see now that we have our size option set from which we can select one and it's required. And then we have the extra toppings in which we can select multiple and it's optional. So I'll click the size and I can choose between regular and large and the toppings I want and I'll add that to the cart. And here the customer can see all the customizations that they have made. And now let's take a look at some of the extra settings available in the option set. So I'll go to the extra toppings and I will edit it. So we'll go back to the conditions tab and here we have the enable option quantity. And this makes it so the customer can pick multiple quantity of one particular option. So I'll show you how it works. I will enable the option and I'll press save. Now I'll go to the pizza store and refresh the page and we will start a new order. And here we will select the veggie pizza and we got the extra toppings. And you can see, instead of being something that gets turned on and off, a customer can actually pick multiple quantity of a particular option. Now if I pick one, it will be $2, and if I pick two, it will be $4. And after adding that to the card, now we can see here all the details that we just pressed. Now with the multiple option quantity setting, there's a few things you can do. You can set a minimum. You can also put a maximum amount allowed and there's a certain amount you're giving for free. So you can put a free quantity as well. Now there's one other very useful thing you can do with the option sets, which is something called the primary option. The pizza size is the perfect candidate for primary option sets. Because a primary option set allows you to highlight a particular choice related to a dish. So I'll go back to my veggie pizza and I'll edit it. And if you go to the Options and Ingredients tab, you can see you can also add and remove option sets directly from here itself. If you like, and under Primary Option Set, I can select that and I can choose my pizza size option. Now, I couldn't select the extra toppings because the extra toppings is not a required option set. But for any option that is required and the choice must be made, you can add that to the primary option set over here. So I'll do the pizza size and I'll press Save. And if you go back to my online store and refresh it, you notice how the pizza actually hides the sizes and the price is directly out here on it. And if you go to order it and select, let's say, the large, so you can see straight away we're going to have the large checked. And when you select the regular, it's going to have the regular check. So the customer can see up front in this particular instance what is the size and what is the price for it. A combo dish is a particular type of dish which contains sub-dishes within it. What it means is, say you wanted to allow customers to buy two pizzas and decide it at a particular price. Then you would create a combo for that. So I'll give you an example for that. So we have sandwiches and pizzas and we're going to create a combo that allows customers to pick one sandwich and one pizza. 
so we'll create a new category and we'll call it combos. Or you can add the combo dish to an existing category, after that you're going to create a new dish and here on the dish type we're going to select combo instead of standard. And notice the options and ingredients tab disappeared and now we have the item choices tab. And this is because the combo only contains sub dishes. So it's not an actual dish and it doesn't have its own ingredients and options. So we'll call this combo sandwiches and pizza and I'll give it a price of 1950. Now in the item choices we'll add two choices, the sandwich and then we'll choose a pizza. And then if you check the boxes it says what dishes are available in this choice. So for the sandwiches they can choose between all the sandwiches and for the pizza they can choose the veggie pizza. Now although a choice represents a choice between many different dishes, in this particular case we only have the veggie pizza, so we'll just select that. It's actually going to be pre-selected when the customer is going to be adding the dish to the card, so I will save this for now. Now we'll take a look at the online store. So the sandwiches and pizza dish combo has been created. I will start to order and we're going to add it to the card. You can see the veggie pizza has been pre-selected for us, but the sandwich because there is multiple choices, a customer will have to click it and then have to choose from the sandwiches available. And because a combo dish is made up of various sub dishes, all the options and the ingredients from the sub dishes are carried on here. So we created some ingredients for a grilled chicken sandwich and the customer can remove it and for the veggie pizza, they can pick their size and can add some extra toppings. Now there's a second way to handle prices of the dishes within combos, so we'll take a look at how that works. So when we go to edit our combo, we see the combo price type. We selected earlier the standard, now we'll put the difference. The difference price will increase the prices of certain choices depending on the cost of the lowest price dish and the cost of the dish itself. It's probably best explained by actually seeing what I mean, so I will press save and go to the store. We can see there are two sandwiches available. The first one is $9.50 and the second one is $12.50. So there is a $3 difference between the lowest price sandwich and the highest price sandwich. So we're going to add a combo now and we'll select a sandwich. You see the grilled chicken costs $3 more because the ham and cheese is the cheapest and the grilled chicken costs a little bit more. The customer once he selected, they will have to pay that extra price over here. Now there is one very useful thing you can do with combos. Let's say for instance this combo said a sandwich and regular pizza instead of just any pizza. What that means is that we don't want the customer to be able to choose a size because the size is already a regular pizza. So we want them to be able to remove this particular option from the combo without actually having to modify the dish. Because if a customer picked it regularly, you want them to be able to choose large. Now we will go back to edit combo and scroll down to option set blacklist. Now here we can blacklist the pizza size option set and if we do this, what it means is whatever dish have the pizza size option set add to it, you will no longer be able to select the size through this particular combo. So now if I go back and start the order, I will try to order the pizza and we actually see that the pizza size is gone. So an item tag is a great way to highlight a particular attribute of a dish and make that stand out in the menu. So for example, I'm going to show you how to create a spicy dish tag on the menu page. We will select these tags on the top and we'll create a new dish tag and you can see a little bit of an example here. Whatever settings you can change down here, it will automatically be reflected. And this is what the tags look like in your online store. We will give it a name, then the tag next will say spicy. And next we can choose an icon type. I select text icon and say for instance I put S. So we can see the little box with the S in it and whatever we write it will be reflected there as well. Next we have the icon type which is an actual proper little icon. Now this is very useful because you can represent many common foods and areas with these icons. So for spicy we can put chili. So now we have the little chili icon and beside it spicy which is pretty good. Lastly, we want to change the color, so ideally spicy is something red dark, uh, so I will select the tag background color and I'll give it a deep dark red. And the icon color, which is as you can see, is currently still orange, we can also give it a deep dark red. And now we got a pretty little nice tag over here. And next we will add it to a dish. 
so we can add and remove from the dishes we will click that and we will add it to our veggie pizza and press save now if you go to our online store we can have a look and see that the nice spicy tag is over here you can add as many tags as you want but you don't want to add too many because otherwise it will spill over your other option is that you can move the position of the dish tag by going to your website settings so you go to items and then you see item tag position now say I change this from top edge to inner bottom and press save. So I'll refresh the page and I can see that the button is now there. So we can choose whatever you want based on what you think is better.